Welcome to the Norris Group Real Estate Podcast, a show committed to bringing you insights from thought leaders shaping the real estate industry. In each episode, we'll dive into conversations with industry experts and local insiders, all aimed at helping you thrive in an ever-changing real estate market, continuing the legacy that Bruce Norris created, sharing valuable knowledge, and empowering you on your real estate journey. Whether you're a seasoned pro or a newcomer, this is your go-to source for insider tips, market trends, and success strategies. Here's your host, Craig Evans. Hey, everyone. It's so good to have you back today. We are very, very excited. I've got a guest that I've been excited to have on here with me for a while now. Uh, Christina Suter has become a, a... a, a very good friend of mine over the last year, year and a half that, that we've been able to share a lot of conversations about real estate. Uh, so I'm super excited about having her on. So uh, let me tell you a little, about, a little bit about Christina. Over the last 15 years, Christina found the greatest obstacle her clients faced was an overwhelming amount of information about investment real estate that didn't produce the results they needed. So she created the Live a Rich Life Real Estate Investment Workshop to simplify the process so people could get started at a pace they could handle using a system that maximized results. For over three decades now, Christina has experienced massive success in the real estate world. She's purchased over $40 million in real estate and acquired over 350 doors. In 2019, she co-authored the book, You've Got This, on real estate investing success She founded Phoebe Pasadena with over 3,500 members as a part of the For Investor by Investor Real Estate Network. She has spoken at top industry events, including the Think Realty Conference and Expo and the Intelligent Investors Real Estate Conference. She hosts the Real Estate Breakthrough Podcast, where she coaches investors and interviews the industry's top players. Christina serves as a chairman on the Board of Resources for Infant Educators, offers hours of free service and real estate mentorship every week, and supports charities including Veterans of America, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, National Police Association, and Make-A-Wish Foundation. As a mom to her daughter and successful business owner, Christina offers a unique perspective on how to optimize your real estate investment while aligning with your personal values. Okay, Christina, that's a mouthful. <laughs> and, <laughs> but, well, I should have done a Bruce move. I should have cut you off halfway through, through and gone, you know, none of that's really that important. <laughs> I'm just saying, what's, what's important is what's the difference that we make on the planet? You know, what's important is, am I continuing to contribute to the real estate field? What's important is, am I still offering mentorship and guidance to people? What's important is, am I still engaged in the game and current in my knowledge? Like, that's the stuff that you need to know today that's it about whether or not i can help somebody else get their job done right can i help them fulfill their purpose can i help them find where they want to go can i help them get clarity because that's at least for me as a consultant that's my job my job isn't about me it's my expertise helping them find clarity peace and willingness to actually take action in a field that can feel overwhelming well and i'll tell you as, as a dad of two daughters that's part of why i've been excited about getting you on the show and kind of putting out about who you are and what you do not just with you know it's easy to see people like us on stage and and, and we talk and we do this stuff right but again you know a lot of what our show's about we really try to get to know who the people are that do this stuff so that that you know our listeners and people out there can realize that hey the reality is at the end of the day, Christina, you and I put our pants on just like everybody else, you know? That's right. So That's right. Absolutely. And, and they project onto us this concept of, oh, well, we're so fancy and well, they can do it. And then that, but they don't understand is that projection stops them from having faith that they can do it. That's right. That's it. Right? So, we're a human being. We're getting up. We're getting our stuff done. We're parents. Yep. <laughs> right? I'm getting my daughter to school on time or late, That's just right. like everybody else. Right? <laughs> right? And so, you know, and I, it's, it's, it's the, it's, as I explained to a client of mine, like, you need to stop that because when you perceive me as the expert and you as somebody who isn't an expert or cannot get there, there's something special about me. You're putting a barrier between you and your own success, not just between you and me, but between you and your image of yourself as a successful investor inside of real estate who you want to be. Yep. 
Well, just saying. Well, I, I'm a, you, hit, you happen to hit on a little bit of a, a current passion of mine. I'm trying to really clarify that, you know, Kathy Petkin and I talk about that too. Like, how do we clarify from the stage? Hey, guess what? We're no different. That's right. We've just been doing it longer, babe. That's, it. That's all. That's it. Well, listen, so we've known each other now probably, what, a year, year and a half, something like that. Um, mm -hmm. And in and, and, and all honesty, it seems like, with, of course, with everything going on in my life of, of obviously taking over the Norris Group and, and, and kind of changing the, the mind shift of what that looks like, uh, you know, our fund growing leaps and bounds, all of that type of stuff. It feels like the year since I've known you or year and a half since I've known you has flown by. So, um so I, I want to get into a lot of the stuff that you do, things like that. But like I say, really, uh, if we can, if you're all right with it, I'd like to start and just talk about you, right? I, I want our, I, yeah, I want our people to really about. know, like, you know, so where are you originally from? I'm, I'm laughing because it's normally people don't want to talk about me. <laughs> it's kind of like, oh, this is kind of right? cool. You mean I actually get permission <laughs> to talk about me? <laughs> exactly. You know, I'm right. talking about mindset or I'm talking about real estate or I'm talking about economics, right? Like, you know, Christina, who's Christina Suter? Christina Sud was born in downtown Los Angeles at a hospital, but I was born, I was raised in San Gabriel, right? So I wasn't born, I wasn't a home birth, right? But I was raised in San Gabriel, uh, which is like two cities away from where I am now, which is Pasadena. So okay. I, I'm, I'm a local girl. I've lived other places, just so people know. I've lived and purchased other places, but I'm basically a California girl. So uh, tell me, tell me your life growing up. W what were the biggest struggles that you feel that you had as a kid growing up? Uh, let's see. Uh, two I'm going to highlight because I think they're meaningful. First okay. is in, uh, in second grade, I was throwing books at my teachers because I was pretty pissed. And uh, I think one day I even threw a chair. And, uh, and they, they finally went, you know, I think she's struggling in school. And I'm like, yeah, no I'm struggling yep. in school. Um, so I, I got uh, I got at the request of the school. My mom got me diagnosed as dyslexic and ADHD. And uh, yep. I wasn't reading and I wasn't doing math and I wasn't enjoying school. Obviously, <laughs> I was pretty mad at school because I could see there is all this stuff going on that I should be able to do, but I couldn't do. And it had gotten me to the point where I was just kind of pissed. Now, normally girls aren't people who get pissed normally we get quieter and quieter and quieter and we treat i am not that personality so that gives you an idea about my personality right like rah! um but the advantage is i got diagnosed and then i got put into a special ed school with this amazing teacher her name was mrs bellman and i followed her from school to school for almost three years because the program moved from place to place and it was the first quote unquote 2e program that was publicly funded like lily the first year of the first time in California, they had what was called a two-way program, which means you're right. I'm smart enough to know that I'm not getting it right, but I have a learning difference and therefore I'm not getting it. And so I learned eight years of math, five years of reading and three years of spelling in about three years. And I'm still, I still spell like a third grader. I'm just telling you, <laughs> I still spell like a third grader. So don't read my posts too carefully because you'll find a lot of mistakes in them. <laughs> So you said you had two things. So what's that yeah, second? That was, so that was one. Then eventually I went back and I, especially on the phone call with Joey yesterday, because eventually I went back and I went back into public school and then I went back to a private middle school in a place called Mayfield, uh, which is here in Southern California. And then I went to a boarding school on the East Coast. And then I came back here for college and I have a bachelor's in business. I have a teacher's credential and I have a master's in psychology. And I, what's significant about that was I was told by, my parents were told, by my special ed teacher, who I loved so much and who had such faith in me that I'd never make it through college. And again, that sort of angry kid came out and went, well, screw that. <laughs> so, so, so I got, you know, I know I got one degree, I got three of them. So there, right? That's right. right. It's not a PhD, I confess, it's not a PhD. My husband has a PhD, it's not a PhD. But, uh, but it, it was important that I decided, and this was, you know, part of my personal growth work for the 20 years after I finally graduated college and started really deep diving into personal growth work that I didn't want these things, these messages, this anger, this frustration, this self-doubt, this self-hatred, right? This fear of my capacity to perform be the thing that defined how I was gonna be in my world and my success in my world. So it's not so much about finishing the colleges, 
is it's about the choice of who I'm going to be for me. Right. You know, yeah, it's really great that maybe I can help other people, but I wanted to be peaceful. I wanted to feel normal. I wanted to participate in the world. I didn't want to hide in a corner because I was afraid or because I didn't fit in. And that to me is the most important part of the story, isn't the special ed school, but the choice to make a stand for yourself of who you're going to be to fulfill your possibility and expectations of yourself, regardless of what the world has told you or taught you. That to me is the, is the important lesson. So that was one story. So, Go ahead. I'll so, tell you the so, other story in a minute. So, so let me ask you this with, with, cause my wife is actually dyslexic, right? Uh, she, she's struggled with that throughout her life. And, and, and it's interesting to hear your story on that. Cause she always says, I don't get mad. I just get even right. I'm going to, I'm going to find a way through that. I'm going to, I'm going to work through that and fix it. Right. <laughs> like this is just, we laugh. I, I, Joey knows my wife very well and, uh, she's got long, beautiful red hair. I love my wife and my kids adore, I mean, to death. Right. But, we call her Big Red, you know, and it's one of those things. It's like you don't cross Big Red, right? Don't don't piss off, Mama. Uh. So, but, but it, it's so cool because you know, I, I honestly I didn't know that about you, right? About that you that you had the if we want to call it the special ed process that you worked through through your life, um, and, and so obviously that hit home with that's hitting home with me because I've watched that with my own with my wife, right? Um, so but so you you moved as as a high school student. You were moving through different areas. So how do you think um, the, the factor of, of moving tied in with maybe the growth of a person, um, how, how do you feel like that shaped the foundation of who you were then to become who you are now? When you mean moving, you mean changing schools? Like I was in, I was in more schools than I was grades all the way up until, until like sixth, seventh grade. You mean right. changing schools or do you mean moving as in I physically lived in LA and then I lived in San Francisco and then I physically lived in LA and then I lived in Baltimore and then I lived in US and well, Los Angeles. Let's take both. Which which of those do you think had a bigger effect on you? Um the or or did either one uh, maybe I'm not trying yeah. to take the, yeah, answer, the question back, but you know, did, did either it have one an of effect them on me and what yeah. I get from it? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I'll, I'll tell you, it's, it's, uh, the effect may not have been what one would anticipate. One, yes, I'm willing to accept change. Yeah. I went to multiple yep. different schools in order to succeed. I saw I was getting success by following this teacher. My success with her shaped how I've now effectively, effectively raised my daughter because my daughter is in a school for special ed kids, kids with, who are to eat, right? Kids with learning differences. Right. And I drive an hour and 15 minutes to an hour and a half and for years rented a second apartment in Culver City so that my daughter could be at the school where her self-respect and her self-confidence would remain intact. So yep. I followed Mrs. Bellman from school to school because she made me successful. That was the most peace and success I had in my early childhood was in that school environment. I cherished it so much that our family's life structure is wrapped around my daughter's school. So okay. she can understand what it means to be self-confident and succeeding in an environment. Now, here's a personal story as a mama. My daughter was walking to school and she was dragging a friend's backpack behind her. and She had tied it to her backpack. And I went, well, there you go. That's the out of the box thinking. That is the advantage of, right? The advantage of the diagnosis, out of the box thinking. And I went, that's an example of it. And she stopped. She looked at me, gave me this earnest look, and went, "Mom, I don't think I am. I, I don't think this is the. I don't think this is right." And I went, oh, "Okay, I'm I'm about to hear a big childhood statement, right? Somehow I have screwed up as a mama, or somehow this is not working." And she went, "You know, you guys keep telling me I have this learning difference. I don't know about that. I seem to be just fine." And I'm like, "Woohoo! Okay, it is worth the drive and the extra money. Yes." My child yeah. declares she's fine. Whew. Because from there, she can be whoever she wants. Right. From there, she can define her pathway in her life. That's, I think, all we hope for as parents, ultimately, is that our kid says, I can do it because I want to. I can feel possibility of success because I've seen it in my world. 
So I'm going to assume that's who I'm going to be. That's, again, I, you know, listen, you, you start talking about uh, kids, especially daughters. Th those are tugs of my heart. You know, my, my, my youngest daughter just, um, she's in a band, you know, and uh, she, last year as a sophomore, uh, she was picked by, and it's a big program. You know, it's, I mean, they, they win state stuff every year. They do all the, like, it's, you know, there's several hundred people in this band program, right? So as a sophomore, she was nominated as the captain for their, their, their entire percussion division. And wow. Typically that's a, that's a senior that gets yeah. that, the, those honors, you know, yeah. and, and she was same type of thing, you know, I mean, she, she's not battling with a, with a, a learning disability or things like that, but it's that process of, she was, she was battling with this thought of, am I good enough? How am I going to do this? Why did they pick me for this at this age? And, you know, so I, I think there's a lot of times it is young age for students, for kids, things like that to, to believe in themselves is part of the biggest battle, you know? So. Yeah, I do. I think that is the biggest battle. You know, it's, 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 um, I, yeah, a lot of people focus on academics and I don't worry so much about our academics, but then again, I will, I saw in myself that even if I lagged, I could catch up. So the other thing I learned about moving, and I'll tell this other story, was, again, I can thank my mom for a lot of my successes and for some of my years of therapy, too. Okay, we'll admit it, right? You know, like, just saying, you know, like, there was a lot of moments that maybe should have happened that way, right? Just for those of us who had angry, very big, overweight parents who were domineering, I okay, just saying. But one of the things my mom did do that was right, there were a couple of them. And one of the things that she did do that was really right was I remember when we moved and we did move a couple of times as a kid, when we moved, she'd be like, okay, guys, come on, how are we going to do this? Everybody grab a corner of the sofa. We're moving. Right. And literally everybody that included me. Right. So at least like there was like this concept of we all pitch in, we're all making it happen. And I just, I later, I learned to cherish that expectation of self that we're just going to pitch in and make it happen. Right. So that was a value that my mom taught me that I find I still cherish and I still hold in my communities and I still believe in as a form of success. And thank my mom for that value being taught to me early and, and role modeled. And, and that, I'll be honest, that is such a, a huge aspect. You know, one of our uh, one of our core values in all of our companies we talk about is grit, you know, yeah. and it's that aspect. Of, you, you, you just got to dive in. And, and it's, it's one of those things, you know, we've got hundreds of employees and all this kind of stuff. And, and we talk so much about the aspect of, um, listen, if you're coming and you're just wanting to work based off what your job description says, that's not what we're about, right? We're about the, everybody grab the corner of the couch. Cause we're all going to pick it up and move right now. Right. Okay. Like, yeah, we all have our duties. We all have our descriptions, but at the end of the day, when the couch needs to be moved, we all pick it up. We, we, we don't wait for our two brothers to go pick it up. Right. We, we all right. dive in and pick it up, you know? Exactly. So that, that's cool. So, so let's see. So if I'm understanding right now, you lived on the East coast for some of your high school. Is that correct? Yeah. It was a girl's boarding school. Okay. All right. So how do you think a West coast kid now you're an East coast boarding school, special ed. I mean, like this no, is a movie, right? No, <laughs> it's no, a movie. the answer is no. I never should have gone. Like Garrison Forest was the school I went to, and many people recognize the name. And it was a great school, and they were willing to accept a special ed kid who I took. I took Latin, I took French, I took Spanish, and I failed all of them. I'm just saying, I failed every one of those as a foreign language. Okay, what they gave me as a foreign language, thank God, was computer programming. So I know how to, I knew knew how to do DOS, and I knew how to do Pascal. And I was running the computer room as a junior in high school. I ran the computer room, like literally, like I would leave it open after school hours so people could use it, you know, blah, 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 right? Which was great. Thank God they were willing to change my foreign language requirement from my traditional foreign language to a out of the box foreign language. And that was why I went to Garrison Forest for a high school was they were willing in a highly academic college preparatory boarding school with a long academic history, they're willing to take a chance on me in being able to be a kid with a learning difference. And I got extra tutoring during the school hours in order to help me with my executive functioning and my success. They still couldn't teach me a foreign language, but, but I never fit in. 
The point is culturally, yep. I never fit in. It was never just an academic question. It was a cultural question. So I really didn't make a lot of friends. And even going back to my like high school reunion, it was like, I was sitting with these, with these girls and my sister went, do you know those girls? I'm like, yeah, they were my classmates. And they're like, wow, they behaved like they didn't even know you. And I'm like, well, they kind of didn't know me. The truth right. is it was a culture clash for me. I'm outspoken. I'm overly friendly. I wore nothing but flip flops for the whole summer and short skirts. And that was so not the East Coast way. Um, yeah. I've learned to respect. I've lived in, I lived in, as, as a high school student, I lived in Baltimore. Um, and I also went back and lived in Washington, D.C. in Northern Virginia. And, and I invested in Northern Virginia as well. And so I've been on the East Coast. I've learned to appreciate what their culture is based in, which is this long term, slow grow trust. These are my best friends. I went to high school with them or I went to college with them. They're the ones who are going to help me move. I trust them. You're chatty and you're in my face and you may be there tomorrow, but you may not be there tomorrow. And I don't know that. So I don't trust it. Right. Yep. I've learned to respect it, but I didn't do well in that. Not as a high school student, not as an ADHD kid, unmedicated, unmedicated, <laughs> and not as a dyslexic. I did not do well in that environment. So, so when do you think you started turning some of those corners? Was it college? I mean, you were at what uh, USC, if I remember right? Yeah. So once I so, was, it was, yeah, it was college. It was, it was okay. college once I hit my business courses. All of a sudden, when I hit my business courses, people were coming to me going, uh, you seem to understand what the teacher is saying. Will you talk me through the homework? And I'm like, wait a minute, you want me to talk to you through the homework? <laughs> I'm really confused over here. <laughs> but all of a sudden, I went from like struggling to, you know, really understanding. Yeah, I understand business law. I understand accounting. I understand the thinking behind that. I understand systems. So I finally got to a point where the educational curriculum was now using my strength and not my weakness. It was no longer about memorizing. It was no longer about understanding what everybody else had created. It was about my capacity to abstract and see a system from the top down and be able to answer their questions from, well, what does this mean if this is the law? And what does this mean if this is the, what the business is facing? And how would you answer that puzzle? Ha ha, now I'm in my area of strength. Finally, that high level to abstract served me as a student, and then I started succeeding. Well, so so as you as you saw that happening, I mean, I'll be honest. I mean, you know, my I have never been diagnosed, but my wife and many of my staff say that I've got severe ADHD, and uh, which doesn't surprise me. I, I think completely different, and yeah. sleep very little, and 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 do lots of stuff, right? But right, um, right. The, uh, okay, I'm a hijacker. I'm a hijacker. I'm totally hijacking. Are you ready? Yes. The gift, the gift, this is my personal agenda, but another personal passion point. When somebody says, I'm an engineer, we don't turn around and say, oh, I'm so sorry that you're so bad at people. Right? <laughs> yeah. When somebody says, I'm an artist or I'm a writer, we don't turn around and go, oh, I'm so sorry you failed in math. Right. We don't have that conversation with them, right? We focus right. on the strengths. What's been misunderstood and what's finally beginning to be understood through Shally, Sally Shaywitz and other people at my daughter's school right, is the gift of the ADHD and the dyslexia is that we are abstract thinkers who do really well in systems. We get stuff done because we're eager and excited about engaging in life. An idle brain like ours doesn't do well. So that's applying right. our brain to something that's creating something that's being effective is incredibly satisfying to us. That's what our brains are built for. So if you yep. stop our capacity to constantly apply our focus, then you're gonna get bad behavior. But yeah. if you allow the focus to constantly go, I'm passionate about this, let me do it. I'm passionate about this, let me do it. I'm passionate, and you constantly allow it, it will grow, it will learn, and it will try to create something better and bigger than what's in front of it. That's the advantage of who we are is we get more done. If you allow us to be competent, we potentially get be even more competent because of the number of things that we can do in a single day and desire to do in a single day. Just mentioning, if you look at it from the other side, it's a gift if we're allowed to channel it. 
not if yeah, we're or, told we need to be a different way. Yeah, or early on in my marriage, obviously, you know, that, that was a process even for my wife. You know, it was just a it was a struggle because it wasn't it, she wasn't used to that, right? Um and she we were actually we we were listen, we're hijacking this whole thing. So we're just gonna we're gonna do whatever we want to do today on the show. Right? So, it's your show, by the way. You get to choose that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was so we were actually last week, uh, we were up in North Carolina with a bunch of youth and um working at a youth camp and doing a bunch of stuff. And and that was one of the things that she was telling me, you know, as we were traveling up there, she was she was talking about she said, you know, uh, for my first few years of being married to you, you know, I, I struggled with and I wanted to change you right I, I wanted to like hey let's just do this right but she said i quickly learned i just needed to let you go and and and, and like you're going to do the things you're going to do and she said it has been so fun for now next month is 25 years of marriage to she's like it was so fun to to watch this life grow because i didn't try to hold you back right um so so yeah I, listen chris it's it's this is actually cool because there's so much more about you that I is a parallel with me and, and, and that, that's, that's been fun. So, so let me ask you this, let's go back yeah. to college. Um, yeah. so, so you're in college as you started seeing and understanding like, Hey, I think differently. I think systematically, uh, you know, I can problem solve and, and I can accomplish a lot. Right. What, what was it that really clicked or was there a thing that said, Hey, you know, I can be the great Christina Suter, right? It, it, was there, was there a driving force that, that you started to see a vision? Like, uh, I can do more in life than, than just hold a job, so to speak. Right. Okay. So it's a big question. I'll try to keep the story short. Cause that's a, you know, 25 year journey. Right. So in, in high school, in high school, my perception was I was not normal. I just was never accepted in high school. I wasn't doing well academically. I almost failed out of my school, my high school the first year. So I both was academically struggling and I wasn't making friends. And I just went, I'm a big fat blah, loser, right? And then when I graduated college, even though I started to see I was hitting my stride, I literally longed to just be normal. I wanted to be normal. And that was left over from a dramatic childhood with a mom who had been abused as a kid and therefore gave us the gift of only hitting us a few times in our childhood in comparison to her level of abuse. But the way she yep. did that was by ignoring us, by not really being an active parent, right? So um, the advantage or disadvantage was with my diagnosis, she was required by schools to pay attention to me, so she did. But my <laughs> older brother and sister didn't have that for good or for bad. So I effectively was raised by my sister, who's five years older than I am. And she will tell you that loud and proud to today at every family occasion that she was effectively my mother. And she was effectively my mother. So Carol, thank you very much for being my mother and holding my hand because there was many things that I missed as being the youngest that my older brother and sister did see that I didn't see, that I wasn't part of, right? which is great. I had other things on my plate, but effectively taking that rough childhood, even though I had great moments with my mom and great mole modeling and the wonderful lessons I've taken from her. And then taking the fact that I was this special ed kid, I was not a happy person in my early twenties. I was not, I was in an abusive relationship. I dated a drug dealer. I dated a couple of different, you know, I, I, you know, a couple of narcissists. I dated a couple of different people in my childhood that I, in my young twenties that I would say weren't necessarily the best for me. Right. And then at 20 something, I was moving out from my abusive boyfriend and I went, you know, the person who is the most central to all of this is me. I did it. I keep bringing this in. I need to work on me. I just long to be normal. So I started a very long path of about 25 years worth of personal growth. And I therapy and alternative therapies and personal growth workshops and insight and landmark form and uh, university bachelor's degree, uh, sorry, a master's in spiritual psychology. Well, I also had started in traditional psychology and I switched over to spiritual psychology. And I just spent a lot of years studying energetic work in Germany with a lead with a teacher over there flying to New York. So I really took it on because I just wanted to be normal. I didn't remember. I didn't want to be defined as the scared kid in the corner that I was or that I had started to become or the scared human being I was in my twenties. And I was now right. acting out in these relationships. So I just wanted to be normal. Okay. So years and years and years. Now we're fast forwarding a couple decades worth of personal growth. And I turn around and I go, Hey, 
I'm feeling pretty normal. I'm feeling pretty happy in my skin. Wow. <laughs> this is amazing. And I look around and I go, hey, guys, I'm normal. And everybody's like, no, you're not. And I'm like, what do you mean I'm not normal? I'm like, why are you so calm and peaceful? <laughs> why, why are you so, like, you know, engaged in life? Why are you so willing to be successful? Why are you? And I'm like, um, because that's joyful. Isn't that joyful? Isn't that what joyful is about? Right? Is wanting. I remember standing on the top of a hill. I was in a personal growth workshop. I was standing on the top of a ski slope. There was a black diamond ski slope, and I was not a black diamond skier. And I remember my instructor, who was my, my personal growth instructor, we were just doing a random trip, right? And he's like, All right, let's do it. Remember about sofa, picking up the sofa, the four corners. All right, let's yep. do it. He's like, Let's go down that hill. And I'm like, There's no way I'm going to go down that hill. No way. And then I looked at him and I went, Oh my God, he's so happy. He's so ready to take on life. I went, well, shoot, that seems like normal to me. Let's do that. And I remember grokking that as saying, that's who I wanted to be in order to know freedom in my life, in my mind, in my world, in order to do whatever Christina wanted to do, not the kid who was diagnosed, not the kid that was afraid of mom, not the kid that was, you know, in this loud household, but the, and not the kid that wanted to be off the planet. I wanted to be that human being that said, let's take on life because we're here. And that was a big switch for me at that time. So that is my path to normal was, wow, let's just play. Yeah. You know? So, all right. You asked the question. I think I answered it. I'm not no, sure. That, that, listen, I, I didn't want to interrupt because I, I don't want people to miss those moments when people, you know, when you're pouring out that type of stuff, I, I want people to hear that, right? I don't want to interrupt. I don't want to stop it. Hey guys, that's going to do it for this week with Christina Suter. We'll look forward to seeing you back next time. For more information on hard money loans, trustee investing and upcoming events with the Norris group, check out the Norris for more information on passive investing through the DBL Capital Real Estate Investment Fund, please visit dblcapital.com. The Norris Group originates and services loans in California and Florida under the California DRE License 01219911, Florida Mortgage Lender License 1577, and NMLS License 1623669. For more information on hard money lending, go to thenorrisgroup.com and click the hard money tab.